All right, boys. It's the first hunt of 2023, fall season. We're out here archery pronghorn hunting in Montana. It's the day before season. I'm out here with Jace. We're out doing some scouting. As you can see, shorts and t-shirts, some Crocs. Enjoying life. This is one of my favorite things to do. It's a draw hunt, but very high odds of drawing it. And you're able to hunt a lot of the state. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool and it's a great way to get kind of in the swing of things for your fall hunts coming up, you know, elk hunting and deer hunting, what have you. It's one of my favorite ways to kind of get into shape, so to speak, getting your spot and stock dialed and I'm excited to do it for the next couple of days. So our plan for today is to check out a bunch of these areas. We're gonna try and find some water, maybe set up a blind or two. I've been watching Randy's uh, pronghorn class on outdoor class. And it's actually pretty sweet, you know. I've been doing this for a couple years, and I still learn some some interesting new new information from it, especially from the archery pronghorn chapter. So check it out if you haven't already. Um, we're gonna kind of just do a bunch of cruising. So today might be a little bit boring, but tomorrow's opening day, and uh, we're just gonna kind of try and find some good areas to start off tomorrow. There's stuff in that field. There's definitely some antelope in that field. A few does. I don't see any bucks. Something that I learned in Randy's pronghorn class was to set up the blind with the sun in their eyes. So we're gonna sit here as, as a morning sit. So I'm gonna go throw that. That way is west, this way is east. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So I'm gonna put the blind somewhere over here. Ideally, they'll walk to the side that Jace is on right here and be drinking. And I'll have like a 30 yard broadside whack, shot so who knows another thing that I like about this spot is you can just see you can just see a lot so um, we're gonna we're gonna set one here and it'll be an option for one of the mornings Radio colored though. Does and fawns. There's a lot out there. We got like, what time is it? We got like an hour before dark and uh, we found the mother load and I think a lot of people know that this is the mother load because uh, there's two blinds set up about here maybe we'll use the hunting pressure to our advantage I honestly kind of like the thought of starting here and uh, just kind of seeing what happens, like if they spook some this way, or I don't know. There's there's a ton out there. There's and so we're on the edge of a private public boundary, and there's a bunch of pronghorn on the public already. But I'm telling you, there's probably 150 of them out there. We got we got some prospects. We got another spot across the road that we can hit, and then uh, I think Wednesday morning we'll go sit in that blind that we set. But I think we're gonna mess around with these tomorrow. And uh, for the rest of the night, probably just watch these, see what happens, get a little footage for you guys. We'll be up in the, in, early in the morning. Today was a grind. My butt hurts. We've been driving a bunch. 
We covered a ton of country. I put almost 300 miles on my truck today. Hunting season starts tomorrow. Pretty excited. You'd think those are the guys out in the blind. Well, we were out there glassing those pronghorn and um, some guys showed up and I went over and talked to them and asked them if that was their blind out there and it was and they're planning on hunting in the morning. So Jason and I went and looked at a different area, kind of where we think like using hunting pressure to our advantage, we could possibly get on some in the morning. Well, we just came back and we, we saw those guys there out. It kind of looked like they're maybe moving their blind. It looked like they moved their blind. And we got up on this higher vantage point where we can see a lot further. And those pronghorn are just running straight deep into the or deep into the private. So I think that may have just shuffled the deck a little bit for the morning. But I think our plan still is to kind of just come out here, first light, see what's going on. Um, we have some some pronghorn on the other side of this road that we can also chase which i think if we come out here in the morning and we see a bunch of rigs which is very likely um and a bunch of people running around here we either a see if there's a way to use that pressure to our advantage and then our backup plan will be just go across the road and, and hopefully nobody's messed with those other ones um we're gonna go eat some brats hang out tonight get some sleep and we'll be up early at it tomorrow. Hunting season 2023, baby. Archery antelope. I can't wait for tomorrow. Opening day. It's uh, something I look forward to every year. So we'll see you see in the morning. I'm gonna grab the spotter and if there's some in that group, or if there's a buck in that group, might as well send it in there. There's enough like rollingness. The only thing that I'm worried about is the wind. stock in there's two prong oranges over the roll of this hill if we can get real close i'll shoot the, i'll shoot the doe we gotta get real close though oh we already got one looking at us there's already one out there looking at us Hard. I feel like we didn't even really do anything in Spooktrum. So we'll go, we're gonna go look at some other, some other area, a different area that has a little more topography and some antelope in it from yesterday. So let's do it.
Michael does not know this buck is what to walk up on him. Michael, dude, <laughs> pay attention, dog. Awesome, nice buck, too. That's painful. That's painful. He's too small. That's probably got to be the luckiest antelope that'll walk Dude, in parts today. That was a joke. That, he's not too small. We uh, went and checked out an area over here. And uh, we saw some antelope, but we come back and this buck is just sprinting along this fence. And we thought it was like, oh my gosh, this guy's gonna shoot. We, said, we drove by this guy who's just sitting on the fence, uh, sitting like, it's actually a really good spot for doing what we, we were just doing. But uh, this buck's running by, he shot and missed it. We watched it run, run by the truck and we were glassing, no arrow, nothing, no blood. Um, and so I'm like, heck, I'm gonna go sit on this fence and try and cut him off. So I sat on the fence, I saw him running towards me, and I got ready the first time. And he, he ran up here, he kind of like looked, but then he ran out into the public, like out. And I was like, okay, he's gone, he's not gonna do it twice. So I'm glassing, I'm looking over here, and He's probably like 30 yards away when I hear his feet. Cause I'm like, I'm looking the other way. I'm looking, I'm he like, think, dude, he was so close, so close. And like, so I grabbed my bow and he didn't even care. But then like, as I was like trying to get going, he like stopped and saw me and oh, man, dude, talk about getting your caught with your pants down. How close was he when he, cause he spooked? And then he swung back around. He was like 100 yards away. But, dude, such a bummer. I, if I, I, I was watching him sprint at you, and I'm like, gosh, Michael does not know he's coming. I had no idea. I was like, this is not going to work. I had no idea. He doesn't know he's coming. I had no idea. <sighs> dude, oh, it hurts, man. It hurts so bad. <laughs> it hurts so bad. That was like... It would have been such a, a close encounter. I mean, it was a close encounter, but we're going to go around and then up into some, like, some more stockable terrain. But, man, that hurts. We got a doe. Probably, like, 200 yards. I'm going to swing around and see if I can pop over. We'll see. We, we came in, got into 60 yards, but she was on alert. And that's kind of 
I'm not going to shoot uh, 60 yards at an alert uh, pronghorn, but two times being in an archery range, it's not even 9 o'clock a.m. Happy with that. So we're going to cruise up over these hills, look on the backside if we can. We'll do that and then uh, go back to the what we deem the playground where all those other antelope are and all the other people. We were just on top of this mountain up here. Rode glass down and saw some antelope, but we are unsure exactly where they are. But we're gonna sneak over and see if we can spot them. I think they're in this creek drainage. So as the light gets lower, we're gonna go slow. As the light gets lower, hopefully we can sneak into archery range and arrow one. We'll see. It's like last light here, I'm being quiet because there's pronghorn behind us. Not, I mean, they're out in the field running around chasing each other, doing pronghorn stuff, but we decided that uh, Jace's uh, uh, actually threw this out there and I think it's a great idea. We're gonna camp here, we're gonna wake up in the morning. I wanted to go sit that blind in the morning and we still might but we're gonna see if we can chase these guys before. And then once it gets to like nine o'clock, eight o'clock, we'll go sit that blind. But hey, it's been an amazing couple days out here chasing pronghorn around, it's been tough. And that's just archery pronghorn hunting. But thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the morning. It's our second day of hunting and our third day out here. Last night we left some pronghorn down here in this basin and uh, they were there about an hour, or 20, 30 minutes ago, gone now. But the big plan for today is to sit that blind for as long as we can stand it. So we're gonna make our way out of here. If we find some that we can stock, we're definitely gonna stock them, but we're gonna make our way over to that blind and. We're gonna be pretty bored and see how long we can we can last in there. It's time to get serious, boys. And 
we just got into this blind and kind of wanted to talk about Jace. Your, your, your arm is in it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We good. We good. We good. We good. All right. So it's 7:45. We just got into this blind and we set it up a couple days ago because we saw some pronghorn in this area that it looked like they were coming to drink. One of my disadvantages is like I'm pretty impatient, especially when it comes to sitting and looking at a water tank. <laughs> but if something does come in, it's going to be pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to I've been looking forward to sitting in here since we got here. Um, we can see a lot around us, so that's cool too. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. All right, well, we've been sitting here for close to five hours now, and nothing's came into the tank, but there's been a buck that's just kind of been moseying around behind us. He keeps on looking up at the blind and then feeding and looking up at the blind, feeding, but he's, I don't think he's really interested in coming up here. And he just dipped down into a stockable spot. And we got a lot of wind and it just, it feels right. So I'm gonna go try and get him. We only brought the big long lens, so I think Jace is going to stay up here and film. Um, but we'll go try and put a stock on this buck, maybe get a shot off, put some meat on ice. I'd love that. I was planning on staying here till noon, and it's it's 12.15 now. So I, I would stay here if he was making moves up this way, but he's not. And I kind of feel like he's just going to take this drainage down, so... Go see if I can put one in. As quick as Michael hopped out of the blind to go put a move on that antelope buck, the, the antelope was back in sight and was staring at us in the blind and Michael out of the blind. So he had immediately just laid down. <laughs> has been laying on the ground for quite some time now and the buck finally bedded so he couldn't take laying out there in the sun anymore so he says he's gonna just gonna do a big loop try to swing around the back of the antelope because he can't go after it now it's up high enough to where he would never be able to get out of view so if he goes around the back he might be able to do something but as soon as he started walking the buck stood back up and just staring at him so hopefully he gets out of view and the buck calms back down and maybe lays back down or just kind of chills out and isn't on the look for him. So, we'll see what happens. It's not looking good. He's now running down towards, he went into the bottom. He's out of sight at the moment. Oh, yeah, I see him. Like I was on alert the whole time, even when we were sitting in the blind, he was looking over here. But I thought once he dipped down in that bottom, I had a good chance of stalking him. I just was about a minute too late. I should have left a minute earlier. I was hemming and hawing here about what I should do, but who knows? Maybe it would have came to water later, but we're gonna go find some other, we're gonna go back to the playground and uh, see if we can mess around with some, some antelope out there and, and uh, have a good rest of the day. And, and see see where it takes us so we'll be back here with the truck we're gonna pull this blind everywhere just running everywhere <laughs>
this was the site of the close encounter yesterday and it kind of that that encounter i mean i kind of feel bad for taking advantage of the fact that this is a terrible fence for wildlife um so the whole reason like i got gained an interest in coming out here is because we've done some pronghorn uh well wildlife um fence removals here in the past couple of years we are part of two percent for conservation and like we have to uh volunteer three days a year and one of them or two of them in the past couple of years have been coming in and taking out fence like this. this is a five strand wire what we've done is we come in take out these fences and replace this and what they'll do is they'll come in and replace this uh bottom strand with smooth wire and it'll be 18 inches off the ground so it'll probably be up to like say here and that's so much better for pronghorn they're just typically i mean i've seen a pronghorn jump a fence once and i've been on so many pronghorn hunts with randy um and done a lot of it myself as well they always almost always go under so this is kind of a classic example of like not a great fence just food for thought i that's pretty much why that pronghorn was running up and down this fence yesterday was because he couldn't find a way to get under it just thought i'd let you guys know it's kind of an interesting tidbit of of wildlife issues that uh we face out here in the west but Kind of interesting, and uh, we got a little bit of daylight left, and we're gonna go head over here. We're gonna hit some spots on the way home and call it a night. So let's go get to it. It's the sun's about to head over that ridge and we got quite a ways to go back home tonight. But appreciate you guys hanging out, watching. I feel pretty defeated, not gonna lie. Pretty pretty not stoked on the amount of stocks and interactions we had, but I can't complain because I did have a pretty got good opportunity yesterday. Um for coming out and just doing uh a quick little hunt you know can't complain so um jace and i we had a good time i had a good time with you jace <laughs> and early season pronghorn it's not an easy deal but we got we did have some good opportunities yesterday today was kind of a bust i wish that we would have got something coming into that blind but um i appreciate you guys watching until next time we'll uh Hey, it's the start of the 2023 hunting season. So that's pretty sweet. Um, Marcus is going to Alaska soon. I'm filming Randy in Idaho. It's going to be a great year. And I'm excited to show you guys all the cool content we have coming out. So see you guys on the next one.